Hello, Wonder Hussy here, just cruising around the desert on a beautiful early spring. Well, actually, it's late winter. It's President's Day weekend. A uh, beautiful day either way in the middle of the Mojave Desert. Uh, my car is in the shop, or, well, my car is at home, actually. I can't go off-roading until I take it to the shop and get a bushing replaced. So I can't go off-roading on my own, but thankfully, my good buddy Eric offered to take me out for the day in his Toyota. And this guy, Eric, knows where every abandoned shack, abandoned mine, old car, anything in the Mojave Desert between LA and Vegas, Eric knows where it is. I've known him for a bunch of years. He's shown me a bunch of cool places. And well, that's what we're out doing today. Uh, he just took me to a really neat old uh, kind of like mine camp that had a really cool old VW bus. That was stop one on our Mojave magical mystery tour. And now we're at stop two, which is, uh, well, I can't tell what it's called because the sign is all faded away, but well, there's an abandoned trailer, abandoned two trailers and a couple few trashed cars. In other words, just enough to make up a crazy story about what happened here. It's another episode of CSI Mojave. What happened? at this abandoned trailer camp. Okay, so we have two trashed cars. This one here is a Passport. What is that, a Honda? Honda Passport? Looks not that old, but then again, it doesn't look that new either because only when we look at the stereo. <laughs> that looks like an old timey AM, FM, not even a CD player. Cigarette lighter, you know it's old. Honda Passport, okay, what's well, four wheel drive? I didn't even know there was such a car, but I don't, maybe they don't make them anymore. Anyway, here's the other abandoned car. Let's check this one out. This looks like an SUV of some sort. Oh my goodness. Oh, somebody was sitting outside reading a paperback. Kitty and the Midnight Hour. Kitty Norville is a midnight shift DJ for a Denver radio station and a werewolf in the closet. <laughs> I've read some crazy books in my day. I've never read one about a lady who was a DJ and a werewolf. That's wild. <laughs> anyway, uh, this is this other abandoned car. Oh, this is an explorer. Holy cow, look at that. Ford Explorer. Dang, that was a beast too. Huh? Wheel tires are gone. Bullet holes in every single panel. This one doesn't look that old either. Look at that. That has a CD player. Ooh, fancy. Okay, so that's the two abandoned cars. Uh, I'm gonna guess this Explorer is from the 90s-ish and that Honda might have been early 90s. So I'm gonna go ahead and place us roughly in the mid to late 90s here at this crime scene. Uh, we'll go ahead and investigate this little trailer first and then we'll go over to this bigger one and see what we can figure out. But before we do that, here's a clue. A busted hard hat. Look at that. These things are meant to protect your head <laughs> from falling debris. And well, looks like some piece of falling debris got the better of it. You know what I mean? Like people are always telling me I should be careful in mines and caves and wear head protection. Well, apparently it's not infallible. Okay, let's go check out the little trailer over here. Um, I'm not gonna lie. My first thought when I saw this place was meth lab. But then again, we are in an area with a bunch of mines and prospects and the place we just explored was obviously a mine camp. So they might've just been working some kind of mine claim around here, but I don't see any edits in this immediate area. Eric said he does know that there are some kind of nearby, but oh, well, who knows, maybe the Maybe the meth lab theory actually has more credence. Okay, now approaching the trailer, I see a couple of noteworthy things. First, here's a bowling pin. <laughs> if you ever wanted to see what a bowling pin looks like on the inside, that's the innards of a bowling pin. Looks like they were using it for target practice and somebody blew it wide open. Uh, there's a shoe that doesn't look super old. I guess that could be from the 90s, Wolverine. Anybody ever wear Wolverine brand boots? And then look over here, a bunch of old VHS tapes. Oh my gosh, remember VHS? Yikes. Let's see what they were watching. What does this say? Platoon. Oh, okay, that's actually a good movie. I've seen that. Uh, they had good taste. Let's see what else. I wanna see where all the porno ones are. Let's see. I'll see a blank melted VHS. That was sure to have been a sex tape or an adult movie. Uh, yeah, none of these have labels on them, unfortunately. Okay, well, we won't know. Oh, here. Tigerland. I've never heard of that. It says it was copyright 2000. Oh, okay, so this movie. Oh, copyright 2001. Movie didn't even come out until 2001. Oh, and look, here's a 
Men of Honor, also copyright 2001. Okay, so that indicates people were out here as of at least 2001. So I said mid-late 90s with the cars, early 2000s with these VHS. Okay, so I'm thinking right around Y2K for this site. Oh gosh, I guess this little TV kind of fits in with that time frame because it's not a... Oh, it is a flat screen. Okay, so flat screen TVs, I guess those were kind of a thing around Y2K. Look what happens when you shoot a flat screen TV. That's interesting. Oh my God, I bet that was kind of fun to do. And then look how the screen is just peeling, peeling away, that's wild. Uh, over here, we got another cowboy boot. That doesn't really tell us much. All right, well, might as well just go on past the other boot into this little trailer. Oh my goodness. Holy wow. There is a lot to look at in this busted little trailer. Beginning with, look at the linoleum. Oh my goodness. I mean, it's totally blistered and cracked from the sun, but you can see back in here where it was green at one time. Oh my word. Look at this place. Okay, so, well, it was just a small little camper like my own. This was a obviously a dinette that folds into a bed. And then on this side, there was like a little... And it looks like that was a closet and then a refrigerator it doesn't really look like there's much left in here in the way of personal items it's a walmart apple juice bottle there's a soda cup from a gas station oh, look at that groovy wallpaper i love it but yeah nothing left in the kitchenette either i mean all the drawers are busted out and there's just rat poo everywhere it's pretty gross look at this oven though magic chef Oh my god, there's nothing in the oven except for a giant pile of... I guess the pack rats do that? Collect all that... almost like wool or something? Okay, so yeah, nothing much left in the way of personal artifacts in this trailer. But there is this really interesting shower stall that has a bunch of crazy drawings all over it. Okay, this is one of those, uh, what do they call it? A wet bath. It's just a, I think that's a toilet that folds down if you want to use it as a commode or like a, you know, bathroom. But when you want to take a shower, you fold the toilet up and the whole room becomes a shower. Oh, look, there's a medicine cabinet, a little sink. Let's see if there's anything in the medicine cabinet. No, unfortunately not. But, okay, I, my first thought of looking at this shower wallpaper was that somebody just drew all over it. But looking at it up close, I think this might actually be a print that you can buy. I mean, it's this little pointy-nosed guy in a bunch of different scenes, like mountain climbing, and uh, I guess he's flying a kite, or he's in an airplane. <laughs> wow, this is a wild pattern for wallpaper in a shower, no less. Far out. Huh, okay, well, I thought it was going to be a little bit more exciting than that. Apologies, I thought somebody had drawn all this stuff themselves, and that would have been infinitely creepier, in my opinion. Oh, well, uh, I just closed the refrigerator to see if there was anything on the outside of the fridge, and there is this Wildlife Forever sticker. 2001 official member. So that goes with our timeline that we've established so far of Y2K and the early aughts. I guess that's what you call the the zeros, the aughts, A-U-G-H-T-S, the aughts. So, 2001, okay. Oh wait, here's a newspaper. Let's see. This will give us all the information we need. Oh look, Wednesday, December 9th, 1992, The Sun, San Bernardino County. Oh, wow. Okay, well, what was going on back in San Bernardino County back in 1992? Marines land, meat press, land where? Oh, in Somalia. Oh, Somalia was going on. Oh, yeah, because 92, that was like Bill Clinton. I remember that. Wasn't that like... What was that movie they made about the Somali... Uh, okay, let's see what else, huh? There's John Mellencamp. He was in the news. Oh, here's a political cartoon. The evolution of the GOP leadership. Jerry Lewis, I guess, evolved to the... Well, he was an elephant. Evolved to the mammoth Richard Army. Dick Army. To the fossil. Oh, I guess they're saying there was no GOP back then. Proof positive. Clinton has skills to lead. Uh, lead what? Okay, and then over here we got Garth Turns... Bro. It's like Garth Brooks 
tries out a life-size replica of a Los Angeles Raiders player. Oh, so he's just putting his head in a Raiders outfit. Oh, Garth Brooks was in the news. All right. Oh, look. <laughs> Holiday sweater sale at Eagleson's for the big and tall man since 1867. So sweaters back then cost $37.99 to $55.99. Wow, that's expensive for a sweater 30 years ago. Let's see some other prices. Uh, we got a boom box for $79.95. What a deal. We got men's Gitano pants, $11.99. Women's flannel nightgown by Kiki was $15.97. Now $6.00. That was over at the Sears Del Rosa outlet store. My, how time flies. It seems like it was only yesterday that it was 1992 and you could get a nighty for six bucks. <laughs> Not anymore. Okay, well, let's go on out of this trailer and walk over to the other one. And as we walk, we'll walk and talk. And, well, gosh, I didn't see any evidence of a meth lab in there. You know, like, it seems like if this thing was a meth lab, it'd be all burned out. You know, you'd see fire damage. Uh, or some evidence of unspeakable chemicals laying around, and I really don't see that. So this might have just been some people hiding out in the desert. You know, maybe they were on the lam, hiding from the police. Maybe they robbed a bank. Maybe they, it was a child custody thing. They took their kids out here. Who knows? Let's poke around this last trailer, and maybe we'll figure it out. Looking for clues, looking for clues. What could be a clue, and what... Oh, here's another hard hat. So maybe they were working a mine. You know, either that or they worked at a job site somewhere and they were just living out here because it was cheaper. You know, that could be. You know, they were building a ton of houses out here in the late 90s, early 2000s. So there was a lot of construction jobs. So I suppose it could have just been some construction workers living out here and trying to save a buck. But I mean, it's such a long and rough drive to get to any job site in Vegas. That doesn't really make sense either. Okay, well, this last trailer actually looks like it was kind of here for a while because there's even like a little kind of like staircase leading up to it. And it looks like there was a tree growing right here by the front entrance. So it kind of had like a, well, sort of a front yard or some sort of landscaping, you know what I mean? So whoever lived here was probably here for a while. Oh my goodness. I wonder if there's going to be anything good in here. I feel like a kid about to unwrap a Christmas present, you know, going into an old abandoned trailer and wondering what I'll find. Okay, we're stepping up into this old RV. And straight in front of us is the kitchen. To the left, kitchen continues on into the living room. To the right, looks like there was a bathroom. And then it's like, a, this is a fifth wheel. So there's a little bedroom that you climb up those stairs to. So let's just see what we have. Oh, isn't this part of a Johnny Walker scotch? Yeah, somebody had nice taste in liquor. That stuff's not cheap. Presumed guilty. Looks like a page turner. Oh, Junius Podrug. Oh my gosh, look. Natural. Oh my god, Toms of Maine. An old tube of Toms of Maine fluoride toothpaste. Okay, wow, that is wild. I actually use Toms of Maine toothpaste myself. Huh? Huh? I've been using it for years. The packaging is different nowadays. They still kind of have the same logo. But what's interesting is this thing is still full. Let me see what the expiration date is. You know how it's usually like stamped into the top of the tube? I can't quite make it out on this one. Almost looks like it says 83. I mean, this is a really old tube of toothpaste, but I'm curious if I open it. If, I mean, it still feels soft. What do you say? Should we try to open this toothpaste and squirt some out? Oh, look, it's pretty easy to open. Oh my God, look. Oh, it's still... Oh, that's for my ASMR fans. Oh my God, yikes. Look at it though. Look at the oils are separating. Oh my God, this is so gross. I can't believe I'm doing this. Interesting. This is wild. I didn't realize toothpaste could separate like that. It's like when you get that natural peanut butter and you have to stir it <laughs> to get it to stay together. Oh, and this is a natural toothpaste. You wouldn't think it would have some kind of weird oils in it. I suppose it could just be the natural cinnamon oil because it is cinnamon flavor. <laughs> mm, and it actually still smells really cinnamon-y and fresh. <laughs> actually makes the old trailer smell a lot better now that I squirted some of that out. Man, I'm not going to lie. I'm very tempted to take the cap off of that thing and just stomp on it and squirt a bunch out. I actually did that when I was a kid. Uh, my parents divorced when I was really young, but our dad, my sister and my dad used to come over and take care of us on the weekends and stuff. And one time he came over and we had this book that we used to like to read, a picture book that he, that he uh, we checked out of the library called Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. 
Well, they made a movie about it about mm, 10, 15 years ago. But the original book, it was just about this weird land where uh, it rained food. Like the weather was food. So like these big fluffy marshmallow clouds would come in. Like it would snow mashed potatoes and whatever. And then the weather went bonkers. And like it started raining really stinky foods like gorgonzola cheese and pea soup. And I can't remember what happened in the book, but uh, there was a, I think there was a tornado, a to tomato soup tornado, a tomato tornado. And there was this one scene in the book where a tornado was blowing everything around and it was blowing this guy standing he was standing there brushing his teeth but i guess he got caught up in the tornado so he was frozen with the toothpaste in one hand and his toothbrush in the other and the toothpaste just spritzing out and so my dad we always thought that was so funny like this is that toothpaste well one weekend my dad brought over a tube of toothpaste and he goes let's just stomp on this toothpaste and see how far we can get it to squirt out and so me and my sister were like super excited. Like, oh my God, we get to waste a tube of toothpaste and squirt it out just for the fun of it. Oh my, my, my mom would never let us do something like that. You know, my mom was the responsible one who had to pay the bills and everything and raise us. But my dad brought over this tube of toothpaste. So we, we laid down a bunch of newspaper in the house and because we were expecting it to shoot out real far. We didn't want to get it on the walls. And then we're, me and my sister were so excited to watch my dad. You know, we let my dad do the stomping. And then, of course, it barely squirted it out at all. Because you know how thick toothpaste is. It only went out a few inches. So it was kind of anticlimactic. We ended up having to just stomp, stomp, and smush the rest of the toothpaste out. But I'm still... I still remember this story. I'm telling it right now, like, gosh, 40... Well, 35 years after it happened. So uh, apparently it was pretty fun, if I remember it that vividly. Okay, all that being said, I am going to stomp on this toothpaste. Because, well... If not here, then where? Okay, well, hopefully the toothpaste equivalent of PETA doesn't get mad at me for doing this. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay this toothpaste tube down here, like here on the threshold. So I'm just gonna stomp on it and see <laughs> if I can get it to shoot out. You know, maybe I should stomp on it sideways. That'd be better. Okay, you ready? I'm gonna do it. One, two, three. Oh, look at that. <laughs> ah! <laughs> kind of reminds me of another movie I saw one time, <laughs> but enough about that. That was actually pretty fun. I'm going to do it again. I don't think I'll get it to go farther out, though. They, look, oh, my God. This is so amazing. Oh, I wish you guys could feel how this feels. Oh, that was so therapeutic. And I don't think there's anybody who would seriously be upset with me for doing this because it's going to dry out in no time flat. It's only going to make this trailer smell better. And this toothpaste was expired anyways. So don't call the police. Okay, anyway, uh, sorry about that toothpaste detour. Now that I think about it, it probably wasn't meth heads living here because, uh, well, aren't meth heads known for having really bad teeth? And they wouldn't... Well, the toothpaste wasn't actually open, so I suppose it could have been meth heads. Anyway, now I've climbed up the stairs into the bedroom of this fifth wheel, and, well, the bed is pretty well collapsed, but there's a ton of books. Like, somebody here definitely liked to read... Not anything too exciting, though. Oh, Dave Barry, that's very late 90s. Remember him? He was a humorist. Tom Clancy, the usual suspects. A couple Tom Clancy's, actually. So I don't know if there's a couple Tom Clancy's. That seems to indicate to me that there was a man living here. You know that book about the werewolf DJ? That was more of a woman's book, I would guess. So maybe she was reading that. He was reading Clancy. Neither one of them was brushing their teeth. Doesn't look like either one of them was cooking up any meth. I mean, unless they were making it in this crock pot here. <laughs> oh my gosh, look at the crock pot. It's almost like there's something still in it. Oh, empty. Nothing for dinner. But somebody apparently did cook here because there's these are pepper flakes. They had some dishwashing soap. They had a little oven and a range. So you could, yeah, you could have cooked a real nice meal up here. <laughs> Three mystery spices on the shelf. My word. Oh, here's a clue. Dog food. There was a dog. They had a dog. Let's see what kind of magazines they were reading. Oh, Pendleton. Pendleton Fall 2008. Oh, okay. That's a clue. Oh, that, look at that old phone, though. Old Radio Shack phone. Kind of cool. Okay, well, unfortunately, that seems to be the only information that we're able to glean about this site. Uh, somebody cooked here. It was a man and a woman. They had a dog. And they were here potentially until as late as 2008. So that's after the boom times in Vegas and into the recession times. So maybe that's what happened. Maybe that he was a construction worker and uh, did well when, you know, all the houses were going up in the 90s and the early 2000s. And then the recession hit. 
and all the work dried up and they had to move out here and squat on this i think we're on blm land they had to squat out here on government land the government's land for free because they couldn't afford to live in vegas anymore because there wasn't any more construction work and so they brought a bunch of canned food and some spices and laid in a whole bunch of paperbacks and well just decided to sit here and wait out the great recession maybe she had a little garden somewhere that seems unlikely but maybe she had a little garden patch he hunted jackrabbits and the occasional bobcat for a delicious pot of bobcat stew which she would simmer up in that delicious crock pot uh, i guess they had some kind of generator for power and he, I mean, he must have had to go get gas every now and then for the generator but we're not that far from interstate 15. oh he could have gone to one of the gas stations out there and filled up their jugs every once a month or so and yeah, maybe they just sat out here until about, oh gosh, when did the recession end in Vegas? For me personally, I feel like the recession ended in like 2012. It's when I got out of my bad loan. I short sold my house and moved into a more modest house like a lot of people did. So that was 2012 for me, for them, who knows? It could have been, well, I don't know when they, they I feel like they just, recently started building houses again so maybe they didn't go back to vegas maybe they went somewhere else maybe he went to the buck and oil fields in north dakota or maybe they went down mexico way and started running drugs who can say the only thing we know for sure is well they didn't like to brush their teeth too much and they probably weren't cooking meth anyway i guess i better head on back to the truck I could poke around this site conjecturing all day long, but I don't want my friend Eric to get bored while I'm, you know, looking through old newspapers, making up wild stories about out-of-work construction workers and their werewolf DJ book-reading wives. But, I don't know, I thought it was an interesting site, and I'm glad I came out here, and, well, I look forward to whatever Eric is going to show me next. And hopefully it'll be of interest to you, too. So stay tuned! <laughs>